Today you wanted to talk about, well, I guess I wanted to talk about um, sexagesimal, why it's so great. There's sort of a lot of, you know, sort of rah-rah about any kind of old historical stuff. And so it's easy as an onlooker to sort of feel like, I don't know, maybe this just all sort of is the same thing of like parents trying to get you to eat broccoli sort of thing. But there is something that's like extra special about sexagesimal that's really only slowly dawned on me. And part of that is sort of understanding the way that mathematical technologies of number and arithmetic uh, are, are really needed to make numeracy possible and just how many of those that, that sexagesimal takes care of in a really good way well ahead of its time. And then the other bit is to know a little bit more about how number systems fit into societies. And so once you have both of these, I think it's a little bit easier to understand that, yeah, there really is something sort of uh, special and worth paying attention to about this number system that's that's been with us for so long. Uh, so first, I guess, uh, if you want to know any of the actual history of sexagesimal or how it works or any of that, um, you can get started with, you know, any number of videos on YouTube or websites out there, or Wikipedia or whatever. Uh, there's lots of this basic information that'll show you the, you know, the base 60 and the way this stuff looks on cuneiform tablets and all that stuff. And I'll also tell you a little bit more detail than I ever could about where sexagesimal was most in use, when it developed, how long it was being used, and that sort of thing. Um, the general markers that I keep in mind are that sexagesimal was developed in Mesopotamia, so you know what today is mostly Iraq. This development and use happened mostly somewhere between 3000 BCE and 1500 BCE. Um, I'm probably off on those dates, and I don't know, maybe you don't want to take my word for that kind of thing anyway. Um, I will tell you that once you get past that surface level of like, here's what the hatch marks look like and stuff like that, and you want to know real history about it, I have found Eleanor Robson's work to be of the most use. In particular, she has a book from 2008 called uh, Mathematics of Ancient Iraq that goes into some great detail about you know sort of what the sources for this material are, um, how to think about uncovering this history, and so on. Um, and, I, and I definitely have her to thank for, I think, sort of thinking a little bit more deeply about sexagesimal than I once did. All right, so it's, it's let's see, sexagesimal is this uh, base 60 system. Um, we know about it because we found hundreds of thousands of cuneiform tablets over the years. And the reason why we've found these things is because people working uh, on pressing things on clay tablets set them aside and then later maybe there's a fire and the fire bakes the clay and so then the tablets are able to withstand a lot of the ravages of time plus they're in a dry area. Um, and so what we actually have is a whole bunch of pieces of like scratch work and trash. The vast majority of these documents were never meant to be public documents, but were just, like I said, scratch work. Uh, and so that, knowing that brings some additional challenges to how we as outsiders in the far future interpret these documents. Um, there's a lot of things that you would expect to see in scratch work that you would never see in say like a proclamation or some other sort of public document. And it's helpful to remember that. Uh, in particular, one of the shortcomings of sexagesimal is that besides being this base 60 system, being a place value system, which I'll say something more about in a minute, that uh, there was no zero at this point. And in general, that, that lacking zero as a number is, is something that, that we can uh, take for granted today and see as a, a powerful part of our number system. Um, and in a lot of these introductory articles, they'll say something like, yeah, you couldn't tell the difference in sexagesimal between 36 and 306. And I think we as outsiders have a hard time telling between 306 and 36. But in the same sort of way, if it's your scratch work, 
you know from the computational context whether you're dealing with 300 or whether you're dealing with 30. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we tend to forget as we you know sort of look back on this ancient number system and say, oh, it's terrible, it doesn't have zero. You know, how could these primitive people ever make it without zero? But we have to understand that what we're seeing by and large is scratch work. Um, and just like our scratch work today, there's a whole lot of the context that would have been in the scribe's head uh, that wouldn't necessarily need to make it out. Um, and another point of understanding in this direction is to realize that sexagesimal wasn't like the number system of Mesopotamia. It was really just middleware for the scribes and the bureaucracy to keep track of all the, the doings and the comings and goings. Uh, grain and area of land and wages, none of these were given customarily in terms of sexagesimal. Every kind of measurement, every type of measurement would have its own number system. Um, just like we have a base 12 number system for feet and inches uh, when we're measuring uh, distance, but then we have a, si a base 16 number system for weight, at least in English customary units. Um, before the metric system took over almost the whole world, the idea of using the same kinds of numbers, just like the, the idea of using the same kinds of units, uh, was an, a level of standardization that just the world didn't see. Um, so rather than using sexagesimal to actually measure things out in the world, uh, the way it worked in Mesopotamia is the scribes had this numerical language of sexagesimal that had all of these uh, arithmetic conveniences you know uh, we can talk more about them later but because it's a place value system uh, it's very efficient for doing arithmetic that might involve very large numbers that might involve very small numbers without needing to invent a whole bunch of new names or anything like that um, and so what the scribes would do is they translate whatever it is they needed into the world of sexagesimal, do all their calculations where everything was easy, and then translate back out for however they needed to report back to people. Um, so knowing these bits and pieces, you can get a sense for why zero being missing might not have been the, the big hindrance that some people make it out to be, and why a lot of the cuneiform tablets you might see are in fact like kind of cryptic to look at um, because what we're seeing is is just sort of this middle part where people are sort of have a a very fluid uh, functional language uh, to work with these numbers for me that's that's the thing that ends up being sort of uh, the hidden side of sexagesimal taking these bits of knowledge that that are easy to come by and seeing what they really mean in terms of this being a, a technology that people used uh, and how that tells us a little something about what was useful about it. Maybe now uh, here at the end to say a little something about place value and how that's important is so in our place value system that, that most of us use most of the time, uh, the one based on decimals, we have zero through nine and then this hierarchy of places, ones, tens, hundreds, and then also going in the other direction, tenths, hundreds, thousandths. And so any number, no matter how big, no matter how small, can be described using just those nine signs arranged in a way that we can sort of uh, keep track of things. And then when we do arithmetic with these numbers, we also can sort of do the arithmetic mostly within the, the particular places and then having rules for you know when we need to carry or borrow, go down, go up, those kinds of things. Um, and so a place value system ends up being tremendously flexible in terms of the sizes of numbers you can write down, but also in how you actually carry out the arithmetic work that you wanna do. Most of us don't realize uh, how difficult basic arithmetic is and how much our technologies, not just things like digital calculators that we might grab when we have to figure out 1 11th or something like that, but even the basic acts of multiplication um, if we didn't have a number system and a significant amount of, you know, sort of training that we had each gone through about how to do that, multiplication is pretty hard. And so what you'll see if you look at any of these, these sort of uh, older systems is the first thing you see is, is 
some sort of contrivance to make it possible to do multiplication, some sort of contrivance to do to today what we would call division, but uh, more commonly is considered as, as reciprocals. Um, so 1 11th is the, is the thing that you would need to multiply 11 by to get 1. The idea would be to figure them out ahead of time. You would have uh, tables of reciprocals that would make it possible for people to do these things. But even describing what something like 1 11th is is, is hard to do uh, outside of a place value system. And so sexagesimal was super useful there because you could use the same grouping of digits that you would before in this system that sort of slides up and down the scale uh, and you don't need entirely new notions to be able to deal with sort of ever smaller numbers. Another place that you can dig into some of what this really means on the ground is I've got another video where I show you uh, how to compute the square root of 2 in sexagesimal, sort of following along in the possible footsteps of a scribe from like 1800 BCE uh, based on one of these pieces of scratch work that was found that has a very good approximation for the square root of 2 in it. You can begin to get a sense of how far ahead of its time sexagesimal allowed these scribes to be. Um, and then I guess the other bit of historical evidence that's worth looking at is, is the fact that we still use sexagesimal in computations of time and geography. And that's because astronomy for a very long time was sort of the one area where you needed to do a lot of detailed calculations, even going way back. And until, say, the 1700s with the advent of logarithms, the only number system we had that made that even a little bit convenient to do was sexagesimal. And so um, that historical trend of using sexagesimal when you really needed a tool for arithmetic um, is still with us today. So uh, that's that's a little bit about what's so special about a sexagesimal. I hope you get a chance to, to try it out, to play around with it enough to get past the initial uneasiness of doing something new and begin to see sort of what the tools are, what the pieces are of it underneath the surface that, that make it such a, a useful technology.